my name is Karen Urbanik, and I am so honored to be here at part of the WIN organization, the wonderful Women's Information Network. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you all about your gut, and I don't know who loves your gut more, you or me, and I'm thinking it might just be me, right? And so how does digestion impact our daily life all day long? Whether our mood is happy or sad has everything to do with what we're eating and how it's being processed. Whether we have genes that turn on or off, all most of it happens right there in the gut. What are we eating and how is it being processed? Are we experiencing bloating? Are we exp experiencing acid reflux? What's going on inside of our bodies that's causing us so much distress? Right here, we're gonna cover some of the top issues that you or a loved one might be dealing with. Number one, we wanna talk about how does digestion work? Well, digestion works from point A until point B, right? And so point A is where we start eating everything. And actually digestion starts before we eat anything at all. If we smell food, we literally have digestive enzymes that are created instantly in our salivary glands to create amylase. Because when we start smelling popcorn, we start smelling something wonderful, some fajita, then all of our body is recognizing we're going to be digesting. And so enzymes are created in the salivary glands called amylase, and that is what helps start breaking down carbohydrates. As we chew our food and it comes down our esophagus into our stomach, our stomach is literally just about the size of your fist. And when it comes to the, the lower esophageal sphincter and it goes into the stomach, that thinks that sphincter closes shut. We have a valve there, right? And so the food comes down into our stomach and then it closes shut. And then in our stomach, it's turning and turning and turning. And then it comes into our duodenum, which then goes to the small intestine, over to the colon and then exits. And so from point A to point B, we make enzymes. We have enzymes that are coming into our body and that is the area that can be causing problems is this area right here in the gut. Well, here we go. You are not just a bunch of cells. Each one of you ladies watching this has about 70 trillion cells, give or take, you know, 10 trillion. And that's not, that's only makes up a very small amount of what we are. We are home to viruses. Viruses are not all bad. Please do not kill all the viruses. You, you wouldn't be giving birth if it wasn't for viruses. Bacteria. You have far more bacteria in your body than you do human cells. You have thousands of species of living bacteria that are in you doing something very important. We'll cover a little bit of that in a minute. And you also have fungus. And believe it or not, there are there's 30, you know, thousand species of fungus. And, and many of them reside in your body and can reside in your body well. But some of them can be dangerous when they're overgrown. You've probably heard of candida. That can be overgrown and there's many strains of candida. So how do we balance this body and what do we look for? Well, the number one common issue I hear about the gut is, oh my gosh, I have bloating or acid reflux. So let's really quickly kind of cover both of those and what to do about that. If you're getting constant acid reflux or a heart burning, that can be for a multitude of reasons. But number one is that there's not enough acid in the stomach. Believe it or not, you might think acid reflux and think, oh, I have too much acid in my stomach. But that's actually not true. The stomach has to maintain a potential of hydrogen or pH of seven point, well, I mean, sorry, 1.8. 7 to 2.9. So it needs to be really acidic in the stomach. Don't put your finger in there. Ouch, right? And so if the stomach has enough acid, then when the food comes down, it'll go through the sphincter, right, into the stomach, and then it'll come through the sphincter and go into the duodenum. If there's not, not enough acid in the stomach, if it's too alkaline, then the lower esophageal sphincter is going to open and you're going to get burping. You're going to get reflux. And so we want to acidify that stomach. So by taking apple cider vinegar, some kind of hydrochloric acid supplement, we're going to put acid into the stomach and get rid of and totally eliminate acid reflux. Ta -da! How wonderful is that? We recommend taking that right before you eat. Another way is just drinking apple cider vinegar a couple of teaspoons in the morning. But most often, especially if you're dealing with it chronically, you want to do that right away, is take it before you eat each meal. And the other big thing we hear of is bloating. Remember how we have these valves. So we have a valve that comes up our esophagus and then we might burp. We have another valve down here that takes the food out of the stomach 
into the duodenum, right? And to the small intestine. Well, that valve can get stuck open. So then we might have bacteria, which are wonderful. You need lots of healthy bacteria in your gut. Five pounds of healthy bacteria in your gut, right? If that bacteria is off gassing, because it's eating and trying to break down too many sugars, well, then we're gonna have all this gas building up and we're gonna get bloated. And that gas might come up as burping. And that also can be where candida resides. Candida resides throughout the whole body, but a lot of it starts in the gut. And then as the candida is eating the sugar that's going into the bloodstream, it can off gas as well. So burping and bloating both can be helped by taking bitters when you're eating uh, and then finding good supplementation in your area or even parsley, right? Taking those bitter herbs that you can eat or a supplement to help get rid of that bloating. But the ultimate thing is to look at, you might be dealing with SIBO, just one of many issues in the gut. There can be leaky gut, SIBO, many digestive disorders. SIBO is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, where we have too much bacteria in the gut, and we actually have some of the bad bacteria in the gut. That's not supposed to be in the stomach. You have bacteria in the brain, right? In your lungs, in your sinuses, right? You have bacteria everywhere, and you, you love it. Kiss your body. You're full of bacteria. I love my bacteria. So we don't want to kill bacteria. We want to kill off some of the bad bacteria, right? And that's when people use silver. Most areas around the world, we have access to silver or gold or some copper. There's different things that we can use to help with that. But small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, it feeds on sugar. So one thing you can do to help reduce the bloating is to not eat things with sugar. So white sugar, brown sugar, and even most grains will cause bloating. So you want to get rid of those things in our diet. This also means you don't take a prebiotic formula. So you've heard the word probiotic, and that is something that we need a lot of in our gut. And our body naturally has probiotics if we have our appendix which makes them. So if you don't have an appendix, you need to be taking probiotics for the rest of your life. But the rest of us who still have an appendix, we can be taking probiotics in different forms, kefir, you know, sauerkraut, your probiotic capsules, and that will help keep the bacterial rate high. But you can also take something called a prebiotic and a prebiotic feeds the probiotic. And so you can buy pre prebiotics to help grow the bacteria that you already have there except if you have SIBO, then we don't want to do that because you want to help kill off some of the extra bacteria. And then many of you have heard about enzymes. Enzymes help to break food down. So if you're eating and you're just not digesting, you just feel very uncomfortable, perhaps take a really diverse enzyme blend. You have enzymes for fats and enzymes for proteins and enzymes for carbohydrates, right? Enzymes for everything. So you might feel drawn to a fat and protein enzyme. And as you eat that food, then you'll be able to break those foods down. I will share with you that living food like a salad or a raw apple or an orange or a lemon or a lime or a guava, right? Um, those living foods that we eat that are raw and alive already have enzymes. So we don't need to take enzymes to break those down. But when we cook our food, we denature all the enzymes. There's no more enzymes to break it down. So if we cook applesauce, well, now we need to use enzymes to help break down that applesauce. Well, because you had a green smoothie or you had some living food during the day, you have some enzymes to break that down. But if you didn't eat your salad, you didn't eat a smoothie, you didn't eat fresh fruits and vegetables, then those enzymes aren't in the body to help break down the food that is cooked. So we really stress eating more living food to help eliminate some of the bloating and help get rid of some of those issues that might be going on in the gut. I do want to end on talking about leaky gut because that can be the cause of most digestive disorders. If you've ever had a stroke, you have leaky gut. If you have allergies, you most likely have leaky gut. So when our food comes down our esophagus and goes into our stomach and then squirts, squirts, squirts into our duodenum, you have these villi. And this is exactly what a villi looks like. These are called microvilli, and the villi are held together by very tight junctions. Oh, right. And so all the food gets sucked up into the ends of the villi, right? And as that food is sucking up, it goes into the circulatory system. Well, leaky gut is when you have your villi lining your intestinal system, billions and billions of them, and all of a sudden, there's a hole in the denosomes. 
And so now the food, instead of coming through the microvilli, it goes right into the bloodstream. Well, if the food goes right into the bloodstream, then there could be a big problem. Alert, alert, there is an infector in section number 64, and it's an almond. Now you have an almond allergy. So you need to tighten up those tight junctions. Wherever you live on the planet, you should have access to slippery elm marshmallow root and licorice root. Well, slippery elm and marshmallow root are herbs that are fantastic for healing the gut and pulling those denosomes back together. So if you have access to slippery elm, some comfrey, some marshmallow root, I'd really recommend you using those two things, mainly slippery elm and marshmallow, but comfrey is also fantastic to help heal that gut lining, which then will heal the entire gut all those holes, and then the body will start absorbing food through the microvilli. So again, when we have digestive issues, it can be for a myriad of things, but there's a few things you can do immediately to help your home environment right here in the gut, and that is to make sure you have enough probiotics, heal the gut, right, using slippery elm and marshmallow root, or if you're in, in an area where you can buy supplements, you'll find most supplements contain those two things. Uh, L-glutamine, there's a lot of things you can use to help heal that gut. Maintaining the right pH in the stomach. Make sure you have enough acid in that stomach so that you don't have acid reflux anymore, right? So you want to keep good acid level in that stomach. We want to eat more living food than dead food so we have enough enzymes to break everything apart. And we want you to know that you your guts are relying on you. You are there to love your guts. And so when you wake up in the morning, be like, good morning. What am I going to eat today that's going to make you happy? What am I going to do to make you feel fantastic? Right? And then consider what you're eating. If you're eating you know, cooked foods and a lot of animal foods, well, you're going to feel a little heavy and a little cooked, right? If you're eating raw living foods, you're going to have more energy. You're going to have more of that excitement because you really are what you eat. So ladies, we are here for you at Holistic Health Educators. I'm here for you at the WIN organization and just know that we got this. And if anybody should love your guts, it should be you. So go to bed tonight, loving your guts and know that we are here to help you any way you can on your road to digestive health. Have a wonderful day.